Welcome. Welcome. How's everybody doing today? We're getting ready to start the Overwatch NA division versus the Overwatch Valorant division scrim in Overwatch. Pretty excited to be here today. On the NA side, we have uh, Habutai, Ert, The Hurt, Royale, Derpy, Xdac, and Valakwar. Valanquar. And then for the for the Valorant side, it looks like we have Sabinex, Bean Sissel, Micro, Mike, Micro K. I'm gonna butcher all of these. These are crazy. Anchored Tyke, like Lucky Dragon, and Sturm and Sturm Rage. First map's gonna be King's Row. And I think we're pretty much ready to get started. Yeah, that sounds like it. Alright, so what is our first map? So first map is going to be King's Row. It's a hybrid map. The initial goal is to capture the first point and then move the payload to the end of the map, hitting two checkpoints in between that. Or hitting, uh, sorry, one checkpoint in between that and the end goal. So um, looks like starting on defense is going to be the Overwatch team, I believe. I see the Overwatch team is flying those fancy colors. They sure are. They sure are. They matched up. I may what or may team not is have... that? That is, uh, it's a conglomerate of a couple different teams. Um, we kind of brought people in from a couple different squads to just kind of pull everybody together. So I believe x is representing our Moonvale team. Royale, Hurt the Hurt, and are representing um, our Violet squad, Sloth team. Uh, Valenquar is actually also known as Enthusiast. And I believe he is just a coach and trainer for Sloth Platoon and uh, Habutai. Uwu Thick Habu is the name that he's going by right now, and Overwatch is a part of our Green Sloth team, I believe. So, a couple different teams joining all together to not hopefully stop the Valorant squad today. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely going to be exciting. So, we have uh, a ban system as well, right? So we are going to be banning a few heroes. Yep, so absolutely. What is the first ban for uh, uh, the first map? Let me check into the bands one more time so I don't mistake them. So for the first map, the bands are going to be Reinhardt, May, Ash, and Moira. Ooh, that, that, that is exciting. I know, because Reinhardt is kind of a staple for King's Row, so this is going to be interesting to see what the Overwatch team is going to do on defense here. If they're going to go maybe double shield or something like Roadhog and Wrecking Ball, uh, it's gonna be, I'm pretty excited to see what they pull out. Yeah, They're probably either going to have to be playing with Winston and... Uh... Trying to dive if they want to play fast or take it slow and steady with, uh, as you say, a double shield. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm not kind of sure. It kind of is going to depend on what healers they choose as well. Because if they do some long range healers, they could go dive. If they do maybe like an Anna and Baptiste, they could do some long range heals. Um, or they could have a Mercy Pocket on uh, like a Genji or a Farah or something like that. They could go Farah Mercy and then have an Anna or a Baptiste as their backup. So it's going to, without the Reinhardt, it's kind of hard to have more of a Brawly comp. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see what they do. Yeah, exactly. But other than that, I believe uh, the Valorant guys, they, they are pretty new to the game. So seeing them play around with the heroes and uh, building up a comp is as, just as much interesting. I heard, yeah, I heard they were practicing. So I'm pretty excited to see what they pull out, see if they're going to do something pretty standard, if they're going to do something completely whack that I've never really seen before. Like I said, standard yeah. for this map is, is Ryan Zarya. So, and then kind of a mixture of, of other characters, but we're going to see from the Valorant squad. Exactly. So then we should be getting oh. started pretty soon here. I think both teams are ready. Here we go. Right. Getting into it. Let's get into the mix. Now entering King's World. So we're starting with, uh, what, Overwatch on defense, right? Yep. Yep, so we're starting with... Uh, the Overwatch NA team is going to start on defense here. This is a pretty... I'd say for the first point, it's even. Um, I don't really see very many first point holds. So most of the people are going to get through this first this first point, and then they're going to get into the, the payload phase of the map. So, But with the Valorant squad not having very much experience, it could be hard to get the team coordination that they need to push through that first point. So let's yeah, see how they the, do. The first kill can be very dangerous. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So this looks like, okay, they're pulling out a Widowmaker, Reinhardt. Okay, this is pretty interesting from the Overwatch NA side. So they've got Zen and Ana, so they have some fairly long-range shields. They still have a shield tank, so they have Sigma as a shield. It's pretty pretty flimsy. It's only 900 HP, so it's pretty easy to bust it. They've got Azaria, Widowmaker, and McCree. So a pretty decent mid-to-long-range comp from the Overwatch NA team. 
And looks like the Ramlet squad is choosing something that's a little bit more brawly. I'm kind of curious to see what other tank they choose. Yeah, it's going to be quite interesting to see if uh, a Sigma is going to be able to hold the front line with uh, such a flinchy shield. Right. But with the with Widowmaker and McCree, they could have a lot of sidelines on the Valorant team. Yep. Not sure what's going on with Beans, Beans at all, but... It oh, here we go. So he chose the Orisa. So they're going with heavy shield comp. Kind of something that's going to be a little bit more brawly. I'm interested to see how this... Um... And they have a Reaper. Yep, they have a Trying Reaper. Flank. Wraith out, Wraith out. Going to the back staircase here. Trying to get a flank on him. I'm interested to see how the mm -hmm. Echo does against the two hit scans on the NA side. So it looks like the Reaper got out. Looks like they're grouping up. I'm not sure what's happening with... Uh... Uh, with their tank situation like the right Valor, now. And here they go, they're approaching, yep, yep, they're approaching the choke. Ooh, they're using their bubbles, they're rotating around the statue. Boy, next deck just absolutely them. demolishing. Absolutely demolishing. Yeah, but it seems to be in some kind of a trouble now with the Echo. Right, and they're kind of stuck in there right now, so I think the NA team is going to kind of start to... And that's a pick with a Venom Mine. You don't see those very often. So it looks yeah, like the echo right. must have been pretty. The echo must have been pretty low when she ran over it. So I wonder if they're going to kind of collapse on them and get some staggers here. It looks like they're kind of stuck behind the team, the Arisa, the tank, and the Ana. And if they're not careful, those tanks can kind of run over your, your squishies back there. Yeah, and now they got the this. Baptiste coming in with the lamp, and they got a Nano already that was built pretty fast. High noon build. Oh, and a double kill from the high noon. That's pretty nasty. That's going to kind of secure that first round. And they cleaned it up pretty well. I was kind of, I was kind of wondering where that one was gonna go. So the Valorant squad kind of started to sandwich them a little bit, but it looks like X Deck was able to get some picks off, and they got a double high noon kill. So they were able to pull off that hold. Yeah, it's quite interesting. Like uh, with the Valorant team, like they, they are playing this pretty well, but uh, they have to stick more together. Right. And they kind the... of needed to after they got a couple of pickoffs. I think they needed to kind of back off a little bit. And another pick from X Deck. He's just absolutely destroying right now. But the Hanzo finds a headshot on the McCree. So now they're pretty even right now. The Zen, Habutai, picking up a pick on the Orisa. Orisa has a pretty big head, so it's a pretty easy target for that Zen to just kind of sit back and throw some damage down. So Valorant Squad's going to kind of back off for a minute. And they pick off the Reaper. That's pretty huge. That's going to delay them quite a bit, probably for an extra you know, 10 to 15 seconds while they have to regroup now. Yeah, that will be enough time for the McCree player on the Ola side to come back. Mm hmm. Absolutely. So now the Overwatch NA side is going to be full strength while the Valorant side regroups. They haven't made any changes to their composition yet. Um, actually, they do have a soldier now instead of uh, instead of a Reaper. Oh, so all coming out from the Sigma here. Two picks, one pick from the Hanzo on next deck, another one on Earth the Hurt the Healer. Looks like Rael got a pick on the Reinhardt, but this Sigma's gonna get eaten alive. The window's down from Valorant side, and this is probably looking like a captured point. Yes, that is uh, Valorant taking point one. Yep. Yeah, so those first two opening picks were pretty huge, coming from both their DPS. So you pick off the DPS, you pick off a healer, and after that it's pretty much pretty much a done deal. x tech and pretty aggressive pretty early there, I'm kind of shocked, and that's going to hurt them quite a bit, because now they can't really hold as aggressive as they'd like to. They're going to have to give up quite a bit of space here. Yes, yeah, so they... With a, this... a nano used on the Zarya, I guess they're going to try to go into it. They think they've got the tools to use, so let's see what they do with it. So the Sigma Shield going out, Sigma Shield's busted, Zarya no shields, no bubbles at all. Pretty big anti on that soldier, but they can't really capitalize. They don't have the extra damage to kind of get in there, bust the shields, and and bust through the healing. That's a pick on the, another headshot from the Hanzo. Looks like Sob's getting some pretty good picks here. Dragon coming out. He's going to split the team in half. They're going to collapse on the Sigma. Pick on the McCree. And that's going to be pretty much another one team fight from the Valorant squad. Most likely going to end up eating up the Genji here. He's probably just going to get a little bit of extra alt charge. And yep, there he goes down. Daria, yeah, okay. Derpy Overwatch was able to get out. Uh, definitely to start breathing a little and uh, regroup. Right, I'm kind of surprised at uh, some of the decisions they've been making. They're, you know, they have a little bit more experience. I feel like they should be holding a little bit better and having a little bit more discipline on going in. And but the Valorant squad's doing really well. They're staying grouped. They're getting picks and they're capitalizing on on advantages. Yeah, they basically got street for the face of complete of a free. Down. Not into the last stage of this map. Three minutes and 29 seconds, and that's a pretty, a pretty good shatter. But not really anybody's going to capitalize on it directly. 
using the Zen alt to kind of keep everybody topped off there, and they're going to move in and get some picks here. Pick off on the Baptiste. And the grab there, I don't know if that was quite needed, but they're going to use the grab and they're going to finish the kills. And so, a uh, Dragon and, Blade for and one and player. Yeah, I think uh, Overwatch is uh, tired of uh, being bullied around by Valorant then. Right. Absolutely, they kind of wanted to just show them that they're not here to mess around. So they're going to be left with a Nano on a High Noon, while on the Valorant squad they're going to have four alts to use. So they're going to have a Hanzo, a Risa, Ana, and a Soldier Visor as well. So I'm kind of interested to see how they combo. The Arisa pull and the Hanzo alt can be a really good combination if you can pull it off right. Yeah, all what really needs to just try to pull as many ults as they can from this fight, so they will have Absolutely. another fight. Window and Arisa all goes down. They're using the High Noon from behind the payload. They let it go early. Nano onto the McCree, so it looks like there's a little miscommunication there. Here comes the Hanzo ult. No pull from the Arisa, but that's a pick on the Ana. That's her main healing is down. The Valorant squad should be able to pull in. Huge dash in coming in from the Genji after the Arisa pull, so that was a good combo there. And here comes the Sigma ult. Gets two players, two squishies. Lamp got came down, Lamp destroyed. And that should be another team, one team fight from the Overwatch NA squad. Yeah, even with the, the ult, <coughs> ult Academy much more in the Valiant's favor, like they held that pretty well. A little bit more coordination with their alts, and I think they could have won that fight. Kind of use their alts kind of just as they were getting them. So, Valiant squad regrouping, coming in for another fight here. Good pick on the Hanzo there from the Zen, but their Ana's down, so they don't really have much healing. They're gonna have to require that Zen getting that extra 10% to get his transcendence so they have some healing. Reinhardt goes down. Eresa's kind of holding cart and they use trans for no reason. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure if they really needed that trans. I think they had this uh, fight completely in the back. I'm not sure if they're. Uh not communicating properly or, or what's going on here, but they're using a lot of all side of team fights after they've won them. Yeah, but it's, this is going to be interesting because they have grab and empty plate, and they're definitely going to capitalize on that. And after that, they'll be about, you know, they should be have nano pretty soon after that, so they should be able to either maybe nano their Reinhardt or nano their high charge Zarya and potentially win another team fight. But use another window coming out from the Valorant squad. I'm going to try and get some damage through that, break the shields at least. Almost kind of pick off on X stack, and that would have been pretty uh, team fight breaking. Because without their their Genji Blade, they're kind of lost here. So I'm gonna kind of see. Pretty interested to see how they play this one. Yeah, all of us have to buy as much time now and wait <clears throat> to use their ults, and uh, they could uh, finish off the round. Absolutely, only 30 seconds left. So really, it's gonna come down to this last team fight here. See if they can maybe trickle back in from spawn. So and here it comes. Alt's coming out from everybody. Huge Dragon Blade from x -Zac. Absolutely massive. Can okay, he get the 6k? I don't know. I don't know if he can or not. The Baptiste is up um, there. He's going. He's going. There, there he is. There is. 6k, 6K to end it from x -Zac. I don't think they're going to be able to make it back to point in order to contest to keep it going anymore. And that's going to be it for the first round. So they pushed it pretty far. They got it past that first. They got it past the first point, moved it through street phase, and they got the first checkpoint. So. Yeah, Looking. that was quite, quite surprising. I think um, the Overwatch guys uh, might have uh, underestimated the Valorant, Valorant guys a little bit, and <clears> they, <throat> they got punished for it. Absolutely. They sure did. They were taking some pretty aggressive fights when they didn't really have numbers and they didn't have ultimates, being a little bit sloppy with their alt usage as well. So overall, I think the Valorant squad is doing well in, as far as like pickoffs go, so they're getting some real good pickoffs with and uh, kills with just their basic abilities. But uh, they need a little bit better coordination with their alts, and I think they'd have a pretty good shot of, you know, holding them and uh, not letting them complete the map. So, yeah, I know. We get to see how Valorant is planning on trying to hold the first point. Right, right. I'm wondering if they're going to come out with the same comp here. Sigma's a little bit different on attack than he is on defense, so it kind of depends on what. So it looks like they're going to go with the Sigma's Zarya again. XX start with the Widow, he's probably going to look for a couple of picks and, you know, possibly switch back to that Genji, so. Yep, a Valorant playing with a Reinhardt and a Diva. Uh, that's interesting. That's a very interesting combo. You don't see it a lot anymore. Diva's not quite as strong as she used to be. Kind of surprised. Ryan Zarya, if you're, you know, if that's the option for you, if that's available for you, that's pretty standard for this map. But Diva's going to be able to keep better control on their, on their flankers. Have a little sub, absorb some more of that damage and open it up a little bit more for their DPS. So, 
Banner Squad, pretty standard hold of that first corner there near the hotel. And a oh, pick um, right on X stack earlier. That's pretty good. That's basically going to shut down that push unless NA Overwatch can. Uh, that was a long range shot. Yeah, no, that was a pretty good one. <clears throat> Their Sigma kind of needs to get a little bit more aggressive here. He's kind of sitting at choke, not taking advantage of the space. And the Reinhardt's actually given up a decent amount of space here. He's actually sitting in a hotel, not holding that first corner. It looks like they're going to push behind here, maybe try to pick off some healers. Right, right. Huge. So now without their main shield, they don't have really anything to guide to stand behind. And on this map, without the Rhine shield, you pretty much have no cover. So they're going to be able to, from there, push on and kill the rest of the team. And that's going to be a first point capture. Yes, that was very uh, confident in taking that point. Now let's see with uh, Valorant regrouping and switching to the D with the Roadhog. So that. That's a lot of damage that they right. have now. Right, that shield, that Sigma shield is not going to last very long. That 900 HP is going to go down very quickly. If the Sigma can time his shift right, the shift ability basically absorbs all projectile damage that comes towards it and it converts it to shields. So, as long as he times the Roadhog hook properly, especially standing in front of a, a, window, a Baptiste window right there, he can absorb a lot of that damage to turn it into an extra shield. So. But they have a Dragon Blade for NA and they have Grav too. So they have Grav Blade. Which could be another one team fight for him, and it could actually probably push him pretty close to through streets phase. For okay, Valorant team, uh, they have just the Moira ult right now. They weren't really able to build any alt charge off that last fight, and a huge pulse bomb coming out and picking the picking the Moira. Yeah, but, but they then, lose the Genji to the Roadhog. They do lose the Genji to the Roadhog, so they're one damage dealer down for Overwatch, and then one healer down for Valorant. That Discord on the Hog's just kind of eating him alive. He's got to be careful there, get some cover. Tracer's out, try to get a pick on the second healer. Nano on the Sigma, that's a huge flux. But it got interrupted by the Roadhog, so it gets canceled. Ryan goes down, Discord got eaten alive. Pick on the McCree, and this is, looks like it's gonna be pretty close to a capture. Window coming out, and Trance. I don't really think they needed the Trance. The Valorant team didn't really have the numbers to cap, or the position to capitalize on that window. I don't think they needed Trance, and they might be wanting that for next fight, but... Not a lot of, oh. no ultimates coming out of the Valorant squad right now. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if that trance was uh, uh, necessarily they played it because it gave them a lot of space. It did, it did. And you know, in the fact in the end it didn't matter because there they go, they captured it and Overwatch is going to take the first map on King's Row. So you can kind of really show, <clears throat> tell where the difference is in experience on defense there. On attack they were able to kind of put something together and get some few pickoffs, but on defense just a lack of experience from the Valorant squad. They didn't really understand how to disengage and, and re-engage the point and regroup and things like that. So, and that was such a huge blade from, from x stack to close it. I think without that blade, it was going to turn in a little bit more brawly. And honestly, that last point could have gone either way. They could have gotten a good overtime push. And we might be telling a different story here if he didn't get that huge blade. Yeah, it was an incredible uh, <clears throat> place from x stack It was like this, uh, the Genji really well. Yes, I've seen some pretty huge plays come out of x -Dak. Um His team, Moonvale, they actually do open division every year. Um, they don't. Uh, they do. They do the best they can. They do pretty well. But x is a pretty all-star DPS. He's always getting those pickoffs. And he's t always the one taking risks, going in there nice and nice and deep to try to get those pickoffs on the healers. We're taking a small break in between maps. We're just going to change maps and change the bands. So the bands for the Overwatch squad now for map two are going to be. User joined your channel. Winston, Widow, Farah, and Brig. Hello, I'm just watching. Uh, swap Sturm and me. Joe, can I have you drop down? This is just the, the we're casting from here right now, so. <laughs> well, I'm just spectating.
Welcome back. Next map is going to be Li Zhang Tower. It's a control map. You want to, basically King of the Hill. You're going to want to take control of the map and hold it until 100%. Um, and it's usually a best. It is a best of three. So, and the bands for this map are going to be for the Overwatch squad are going to be Winston, Widow, Farah, and Brigitte. Yeah, so. it's actually really good for the Valorant guys to get the uh, <clears throat> Widow out of the way, especially with uh, how. Uh, X Dex uh, was getting pretty decent picks on them. Yeah, he was kind of owning on that first point on Gibra on uh, King's Row there. Oh. Yep, getting the constant pick offs, which pretty much delayed their push for a solid minute there at the very beginning. And having the Winston ban too is pretty good because Winston and Dive owns pretty well on control maps. It does really well because you can be basically at every point of the map at all times and help your team out wherever they can. So, kind of a good. Good pick there. Uh, the Farah. Farah does really well on this map, actually. Um, on pretty much all three points of Lee Jung Tower, Farah is really strong. And without having the Brig, that's going to kind of slow them down on their on their more Brawley comps, too. So I'll be pretty interested to see what Overwatch brings out and kind of how they adapt. So here we go. Getting into the game here. Exactly. Let's I'm see how they do. I'm really excited to see actually what the Wild guys are going to pull out for uh, King of the Hill map. Right gonna maybe give dive attempt or if they're just gonna go kind of pretty standard you know maybe like a ryan zarya or a double shield or something like that or even who knows maybe they'll jump on to the fire mercy and do a little, a little bit of a pharmacy mm-hmm mm -hmm. absolutely x stack and enthusiast aka uh valenquire are both really good hit scans so if they go fair at mercy i think they're gonna have a pretty hard time but we'll see depends maybe they're somebody maybe somebody's having an off day or a good day it really just depends but x stack's having a really good day so far Right, we're seeing uh, both teams getting ready in the starting lineups. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it looks like the Valorant squad has kind of a, a weird combination of dive characters and, and brawl characters. They have Ryan Diva again, which worked out, you know, kind of okay for a little bit on King's Rope, but they you know, pretty much got steamrolled after the Reinhardt got picked off first. Um, Hanzo, 7X, 7X was getting some really good picks on, on King's Rope, so... He might be able to get some more pickoffs here and give him some control early. But um, looks like Double Shield coming out from NA, oh, Sigma, and Reinhardt, along with some dive DPS, so Tracer and Genji. So, yeah, the, And there it is. A nice pick on the Tracer early off with the Storm Arrows. And that's pretty much going to open it up for the Valorant squad. Genji picks off the Reinhardt. Sigma picks off the Moira. Two picks for NA. A Genji dash to the Tracer. And then Moira goes down for NA. But I think this is looking like it's going to be an NA one point. Genji on the end of the back, cleaning up that kill. And looks like the Genji might be able to stack a little diva. He looks like he's going to regroup with his team. So, Yeah, Uwe was having a lot of high uh, uh, damage value here with the Sigma, Genji, and the Tracer. They do. They do. The Sigma Shield can come in pretty clutch when their dive characters are in the back line. They might need something to you know, kind of group behind and things like that. So. It looks like here that Yoshi and uh, Axtex are going to be having a little of a scuffle with the Tracer v Tracer. Yep, and then it looks like the Zen picked off picked off Axtex. So Axtex has been uh, getting shut down pretty well on this map. But the tanks are coming in pretty clutch here. Royale and Derpy are putting out a lot of damage and quite a few picks. Axtex and Sibnex going at it. And Sibnex actually gets the bat, the best of uh, Enthusiast there. And then it comes somewhere to finish off the Hanzo. So another one team fight from NA. Yep, and Obo was uh, coming up on really huge ultimates here. Yep, Pulse Bomb, they're close to a Dragon Blade. They have Sigma Alt. They're pretty much coming up on six alts here. And then an early pick off on, the, on, on Yoshi, that's going to be pretty huge. That's going to delay them quite a bit. But a pick up on, on the Tracer, that's huge. That's absolutely huge. Sigma Alt coming out after the Trance. So they notice that the trance is gone and they're going to come out with the Sigma ult to see how many he gets. And I don't know if they just missed or if the Sigma ult got interrupted. Uh, Dragon Blade coming out from x deck in the back line there picks off the Hanzo, but kind of came out after the rest down. of his team died. Yeah, by the, all the looks of it, it looks like the Valorant guys are going to be flipping the points here. Yeah, the NA squad had quite a few ults to work with and to be honest, they kind of blew quite a few of them and didn't get a whole lot of value out of them. Yeah, I, I think that the early trends kind of threw them off. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Balance got trance. Well back, regrouped. 
Balance Squad never turned over the point after that whole fight got won. Now X-Stack comes in, gets three kills. Mori down for, for NA. Reinhardt grouped off the map. And that's gonna be a finished map. Yeah, I'm not really sure what happened there. NA never never converted the point over into their favor after they won yeah, the that... fight. <clears throat> I guess there was uh, still an Overwatch player left on the point, but they maybe they didn't notice him. Yeah, I guess not. <clears throat> if it was a uh, Lucio in the skybox, just <laughs> yeah, looks like Lucio was just working that <laughs> working that inner circle there. Kind of kept it contested the whole time, and looks like Valorant didn't notice, so they couldn't deal with it, and that gave Overwatch time to come in, regroup, use some alts. X Tech got three kills, and they cleaned it up, and that was the end yeah. of that. Uh, as well with just new players to the game, this is like uh, something that you might not necessarily look for. Uh, uh, the Lucio <laughs> roll riding somewhere up in the skybox. Right, or Valorant Squad just automatically assumed that they converted the point, but nobody kind of took the time to check to make sure they really did. Overwatch is going to go. Overwatch NA is going to go straight to point and get set up, and here comes Valorant Squad. No changes to team composition. Ryan went straight in and got a pick on their Reinhardt. Yeah, that was aggressive play. That was a very aggressive play, and it actually looks like it's going to be paying off. Doofus oh, yeah. coming out from X stack. Doofus is actually really good on this map too, as well, because there's four walls surrounding him. So if he punches somebody, there's a pretty good chance you're going to get smashed right into the wall. But really good team fight coming out from Valorant to give him the first point control. Yeah, that was a very uh, aggressive <clears throat> team, and uh, it definitely played off. But they're going to be in a little trouble here because they have D.Va on Mac and uh, they are a bit of split at the moment. So they mm -hmm. have to regroup if they want to contest. Yep, Doomfist with the uppercut on the little D.Va to get that pick off. But the Mora gets the Doomfist pick. Shatter does not get anything, any value from the Valorant squad. And NA Overwatch just comes in and cleans house. <clears throat> the D.Va not getting Remek there. Basically puts him at a 5v6 and then... Overwatch was able to just, without getting uh, any value from the Shatter from the Valorant side, they weren't really able to, to get any picks off that. So, Overwatch NA looks like they have more alt, coming close to a, a Shatter, Doomfist alt, and then for the Valorant side, we're getting close to more alt, and they have a Pulse Bomb now as well, and they're close to Dragon Blade, or they're close to uh, Drag Hanzo Dragons. Yeah, but they got, get, get a good pick there. Yep. So, Dragon's coming out from the Hanzo, it's going to split the team in half. It's just amazing how uh, their Sanyata player, Mikrok, he's very good in getting those early picks uh, before the teamfight. <clears throat> yes, yes, absolutely. So the Zen's doing actually quite a bit of damage. I don't think the Doomfist or the Genji is putting enough uh, pressure on him. But it looks like it's just not quite enough. He's getting one pick, and then I don't uh, really know what's happening with Valorant Squad, but NA is finding some, some more pickoffs to win each of these teamfights. The regroup coming in from Valorant. <clears throat> Right, that's... They've, they've got more alts, so I wonder if they're going to maybe try to initiate with that and get some damage coming in. <clears throat> and there it goes, from the left-hand side. Looks so like the Mora is just trying to kind of solo alt and put in some damage from behind him there. <clears throat> but yes, I, don't think it was, I don't think it was enough because she wasn't there to support the rest of their team, so NA sees that and just kind of rushes in and runs them over. Yeah, Overwatch uh, team using uh, a few ults there that uh, just completely obliterated uh, the Valorant team. And and they still have a little bit in the bank to uh, actually finish out the round. Absolutely, they have a Dragon Blade, a Sigma Alt, and a Sound Barrier. And Valorant doesn't have anything worth it. And a huge, huge early pickoff on the Drunkraft from x -Tac. That's going to make this really tough. The Beat comes out, and they're just letting all their alts fly here. Every single one of them. x getting two kills with the Dragon Blade. Diva Bomb coming in. Not going to find any value. Breaks the Rhine Shield. That's going to be about it. Swaying away on the Diva. With the little Diva gone, I think that's going to be the end of the hopes and dreams. Junkrat coming back in. Maybe he's going to be able to find a pick. No. Going to get <laughs> solo shattered. Actually dies to the shatter. Completely annihilated. And yeah, that's going that to be a 2-0 victory from Overwatch NA over Valorant squad. Yeah, that is GG. Good effort on Valorant's uh, team. They played really well. <clears throat> Absolutely. Absolutely. I think the Valorant squad for... You know, not having as much experience as the, as the NA squad. Did pretty well. They, did, they were staying grouped, they were trying to do combo with their alts, but I think x and uh, Enthusiast just kept getting a lot of value from their early pickoffs.
yep, so we can, right now we can move right into the scrim, the mixed scrim. So yeah, well, uh, we are going to be mixing the teams together, right? Yeah. So the Valorant squad and the Overwatch squad are going to kind of mix together, and we're just going to kind of have a. Uh, it's a I believe it's a control map, right? Or do we maybe want to do something different? Yeah. All right. Uh, I guess we're we're going to be taking a quick break uh, while we decide uh, the map pick here, and we're going to shuffle the team a little bit around and uh, see some interesting <laughs> coming out of that. Absolutely. We'll see you guys in a few minutes.
Welcome back. So we switched up the teams a little bit. We put three Valorant guys and three Overwatch guys on each team. Then we're gonna go to a control. We're gonna go to an escort map, and it's gonna be Rialto. So I yeah, think everybody's it's ready. Definitely, I'll be very excited. We took all the players, put them in a pot, then mixed it up. <laughs> Absolutely, have no idea what we're gonna get out of it. Yeah, yeah, shook it up a little bit. Kind of took some of the strong players from and uh, from Valorant, kind of put them with. Overwatch and did the same thing with the Overwatch team to kind of maybe try to, to balance that out a little bit more. So now it's going to be really interesting, maybe a little bit more even. Play all, neither of these teams of six have ever played with each other before, so it's going to be pretty scrappy. I, we might not see as many alt combos coming out and things like that, so I'm pretty excited to kind of see what we get. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a wild card. <laughs> but it uh, just makes it more exciting. Absolutely. Just going to make sure everybody's ready and then we're going to get into it. <clears throat> All right, looks like everybody's ready. Uh huh. Welcome to Rialto. All right, Rialto. I always like this map. It's very, very, very beautiful. A very aesthetically pleasing map. And yeah. I don't really. I, I've always liked playing on this map too. Sometimes getting past this first uh, streets phase can be kind of difficult, but <clears throat> you see some pretty interesting things come out, like when people are playing Arisa and they get, you know two three-man pulls off the side. It's pretty exciting, and dive's actually pretty fun on this map as well, so a lot of different comps that you can pull off on this map. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. I remember in um, the Overwatch the EU side, uh, in the Overwatch division, that always when we pl played this map, we always considered the the water to be uh, like the player of the game because everybody is falling into right. the water all the time. Exactly. Usually, usually sometimes it gets the most picks. And it's the most consistent. Sometimes you don't get the best DPS, especially in your random comp games. So, all right, for the uh, the defending squad or for the attacking squad, looks like with Moira, Hanzo, McCree, Arisa, Sigma, and Anna. So, somewhat of a pretty standard. Oh, swapping the Hanzo out for a Genji. So, a pretty standard double shield comp here. Um, for the defending squad, they're going with something a little bit more standard. So, they're going with Ash, Moira, uh, Ryan, Hart, Zarya, Tracer, and Anna. So it looks like the attacking squad is kind of trying to hunker down behind their tanks, and, and the defending squad kind of wants to get in their face and swing the hammer a little bit. So pretty interesting. Yeah, Coming out strong, yeah, set up yeah. both shields on the tank on the on the payload. It's yeah, so really a shame that uh, the attacking squad, uh, the defending squad, is not utilizing uh, the bridge. And... Right. With uh, even a Orisa pool where they can potentially pull somebody into the water. Exactly. Tracer on the back line, blink back with the rest of her team. The defending squad kind of gave him a little bit of space quite early on, but uh, the defending Ash had a pretty de decent dynamite, so she's sitting pretty good, about 40% to her ultimate. A little bit ahead of everybody else. And Genji goes down for the attacking squad, but the Reinhardt goes down for the defending squad. So they're just left with their Zarya, no real strong shield tank to stand behind. Moira alt coming out for the defenders. Yeah, with uh, the spa space that uh, the attacking team has gained, uh, if they manage to win the team fight here, like the defending team will not be able to come back and recontest. Absolutely, but they're gonna they're gonna need that that payload to kind of move back to this first corner here, uh, so they can actually maybe even get a chance at a second fight. So they're kind of in one fight territory right now, even if they don't uh, don't see it that way. Um, they use quite a bit of alt quite a few alts there as well, but they're coming up on. Pulse Bomb and Nano Boost for the defending team. They're pretty close to a Graviton as well. Um, but the attacking team's coming up on six alts. They've got more alt, Dead Eye, uh, Supercharger from the Ariza as well. So we're getting pretty close. We're getting pretty close. Alts are pretty much even on both teams right now. With Pulse Bomb used, but not yielding anything. Uh huh. So it's kind of a waste. So the Tracer's out, back. One all of her abilities reset, she's gonna go in. Grab coming out, but not really nobody's really close enough to come up Ooh, on it, but that was a, a huge anti-nade. That completely collapses uh, the attacking team. Yep, huge anti-nade. The Ash gets a couple picks, they take out the supercharger, and that's gonna be pretty much a reset from the attacking team. So good defense there. Without that anti-nade, I don't think they capitalize on any of that. But the Kree and the Genji both get picks off on a healer, a DPS, and the Ana goes down now too, so they got a little bit too greedy. And now they're going to pay for it. The Ryan's at point with nobody to support him. Zarya Bubble comes in. He's just going to run away, try to save his life as much as he can so they can do a recontest That's here. Right, they stopped out with a, a Moral. Uh, yeah, Moral. Quite interesting. Yeah, Moral comes out, try to get him get him out of that out of that little choke point there. But it's a little, Irk gets a little bit aggressive. 
effective with it. Doesn't use as much to support his team and kind of uses it more to get some damage in there. Bob comes out to contest alt. And when Bob's out, you kind of want to back away and use line of sight. Huge, massive Sigma alt coming out from the attacking team. Gets a pick off on the Ash, and the rest of the team is going to be at least half health. So when the Sigma slams them down, he deals half of their original HP as damage. So a pick off coming in on the Genji, and now a pick off on the Sigma. It looks like the attacking squad kind of divvied themselves up in two different groups instead of staying together, and now they're paying for it. The Zarya is just ripping through them, that high energy beam. Yeah, but uh, the attacking team still has some work, uh, ults to work with. They have uh, a Genji player and Nano, and uh, they could definitely be able to utilize that to win the next fight with the uh, Nano Blade. Absolutely. That could all change, though. If x gets in that back line with a nice Pulse Bomb on the Ana, maybe one more Squishy, that's going to shut that fight down for sure. Nano Blade and Arisa Pull, you can get a good couple kills right off the bat right there, and that will pretty much turn that into a capture first point for the attacking squad. So. Oh, okay. Tracer in the back in. line, yep, coming in, trying I to cause some trouble. For looking for that pulse bump, but uh, that's the same to find the target. Here we go. Meanwhile, Nanoblade. the monkey comes in. Nanoblade gets double kill on the Moira and the Tracer. And they grab him and shut him right down. Zazari gets the kill on the Genji. They're kind of just staying grouped up together on point. Pick off on the Ana that's used. There's no more healing now for the defending squad. Zari gets eaten up, Ryan goes down, and that's going to be a captured point in overtime for the attacking team. Yeah, it's, uh, the grabbing the nano blade was a really good play, but I think he came too late. It, it came, already oh. been, did the damage that he had to do. It did. He got two picks. He got a pick on the tracer and he got a pick on the Moira. Uh, it was good they killed him off. It stopped the bleeding, but it just wasn't enough. They had a healer down, and then when the Ana died, that was pretty much all she wrote for that team fight. So NA squad coming in with four also. Use a pulse bomb. Gets a kill on the Genji that twos. They should be able to collapse and stop him in their tracks right now. Reinhardt slowly pushing up, just kind of holding with a shield though. They didn't really move, move in like they like they could have with that pick. Okay, Ryan so Shatter goes down. Is that not really hitting anybody? He might have right. nice played that. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I think he ran right into the Arise shield, or they were just a little bit out of range there. More all coming in from the attacking side, just pumping the damage and keeping everybody alive while they push in here. Ryan separated from the team now. Ryan's most likely going to go down. Gets a Zarya bubble. Backing up, getting healed up by the Ana, but the Ana on the defending team goes down, and now it's just the Tracer, the Zarya, and the Ryan goes down as well. So Zarya's gonna back up, regroup with her team, and Tracer's killed as well. Might yeah, get an extra pick off on the on the Zarya here. That'd be pretty huge. A good stagger. Mortar comes in with the heals, keeping her keeping her up. And does it look like the defending team is giving up though? They are trying to regroup. But the payload is almost hitting the checkpoint too, and it does. Right, right. I think it was they got that first. In, the def the uh, defending side got that first initial pick on the Genji with the false mom, but they didn't really do anything with it. They kind of stood a choke, and the attacking squad kind of backed up, regrouped, used that mortar all, pushed in, got some kills, and they were able to capture the point off that. But huge anti nade, huge anti nade coming in with the Ana, gets the kill on the Genji, gets the anti on the Arisa, and that's gonna stop him right there. So not a lot of cart progress past the checkpoint for the attacking squad. And that's actually a really, really good place to hold for the defending squad because you have some really good high ground right behind you, right in front of the payload here. So the attacking squad is going to have to pull some alts together, maybe use all everything they've got to try to push past this choke. Yeah, but they come, they're coming up on another nano blade, so they definitely have the ults to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. They got the nano blade. If they can get a good pull nano blade combo, they could get a couple picks there just like they did the last time. And here it comes. Nail yeah. Blade coming up, he's purple, and they yeah. grab him early this time, but he still gets two kills. <clears throat> and they never convert. They never convert on the kill. They get two dead eye kills. The monkey kills the Zarya. And just like that, they push through the choke. Well, it was a really good play from the attacking team with uh, coming in with the Gnano Genji and the Mikrio to finish it up. But uh, they are, will be in a little trouble here with only a Moira to play with. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And the Moira ult's coming out to try to keep the rest of the t attacking team up. Monkey came in a little bit too deep there. Bob go down. Monkey's regrouping with his team. And I think with the, the Winston, the way he's playing, uh, completely uh, de devastating their backline. He keeps up such a pressure that the attacking team 
managed to finish it out. Absolutely. He comes in, drops that bubble. They use a ton of cooldowns on him, but they never convert the kill. And that kind of allows the rest of the attacking team to move in, convert on some kills there, and get the point completed. So they will complete the map, and they'll have 43 seconds left. So let's see if the uh, defending squad can turn it around and maybe get a little bit more time out of it. Yeah, so the defending squad is going to be the attacking squad now. Mm-hmm. A little bit confusing. We can't call can't call them <laughs> Overwatch NA and Valorant NA anymore because they're not their full squad. So we're kind of just going based off of attacking and defending. I think it's kind of blue and red, right? Basically, yeah, blue team, red team. Blue is the defending team. Red is the attacking team. And now it's all oh. swapping around. That we have no idea what's going on. <laughs> right, have no <laughs> no idea what anybody's picking. So it looks like the attacking squad is going to go with a. Ryan Diva. Something a little bit different. You don't see that a lot. But the Diva on this map, at least for the first point, has quite a bit of high ground that she could take control of, which is going to keep a lot of the enemy DPS pretty well suppressed there. All right, red team. Red team is now defending. For the attacking squad, you're going to have double shoot. You're going to have Ryan, Arisa, Ana, Moira for heals, Widow, and Genji is going to be your DPS. So. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Again, he doesn't really have like a Zen Orb or anything like that to keep him alive in the back line. He's going to be relying on his Ana to hit shots kind of across the map or rely on health backs. But let's see if uh, maybe XX can get a couple opening picks with this uh, Widowmaker. There it is. An opening pick right on the Hanzo. And that should actually open it up and they should be able to get some good progress off this. Genji's going in. Getting shot at, getting a little bit suppressed from the Ash that's in the back line of the defending squad. I'm wondering where uh, Axe stack oh. with the Widow, where he's going to set up to try to get some more picks. Right, I think right now he's just kind of set up on that, that backside high ground with a good line of sight there. But the Genji, Yoshi's in there doing some work. Gets picked off with a Fire Strike, but he doesn't come the... Defending Swat doesn't come out unscathed. You get a couple kills before he dies. Yeah, and the, the red team should just focus on pulling back now to be able to do the recontest. Right. Not sure if that uh, more all was needed there, but looks like they're going to capture the point anyway. Red Squad just kind of needs to regroup, get that D.Va back in her mech. Yeah, and get everybody regrouped. Complete, it's complete reset uh, on the yep. red side team. Yep, and that's really good. I mean, they've got 5 minutes and 20 seconds to push to the next checkpoint, which is far and beyond above what uh, blue team or what uh, red team had on their attack. So, red team, if they don't put something together right now, they're gonna be they're gonna be hurting on third point. Yeah, they got a recoup, but let's see if they manage to utilize some of the ults that are coming up. <laughs> Absolutely, they don't have very many right now. All they have is Moira ult, but they're coming really close to dragons from Hanzo. Yeah, add a nano with the Ana. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, attacking squad blue team is coming up. They have a shatter. They're coming up on a nano. They're really close to a nano blade. So that could be a one team fight there. Let's see where it goes. Supercharger comes out and the shatter gets nothing. Nano on the ash. I don't know if maybe that was a that was a miss or if that was on purpose. But Red Squad turning it around. That was a pretty huge nano on the blue team there. But they kinda dumped a lot of alts into that. So they dumped the Moira Alt, Diva, Reinhardt on the Ana. Now they've got their DPS salts. They have Hanzo Dragons, and they've got Bob, which are both really good stalling tools to keep them held back. Yeah, but, but they're still going to be in trouble because uh, the blue team is going to be coming with the Nano Blade. That is a very strong ultimate, and they don't have really thing, anything to stop it. Oh, and that's a huge pick on the Hanzo. So that's one of their alts that they don't have now. Bob coming out, but he gets stuck in a weird spot. It's kind of stuck on that pillar there, and he can't really do as much damage as he would in a better position. Ryan okay. threw his shield down and he got a nan he got uh, anti, which is gonna hold him back from it while he gets healed up. Nano blade comes out, gets one kill on the ash. Gonna get another kill on the Reinhardt. Let's see if he gets any more follow up kills. He flex dashes in, gonna get a little bit extra damage on the Hanzo. He's gonna get out of there, and that most likely is gonna be a capture point from the blue team. Five minutes left to capture this last point. Looking pretty good for the blue squad. Red team still has that dragons. They have not used their Hanzo dragons yet. And that's the only alt they have available. And the Diva just got demeaned. So this is not looking good. More alts coming in to capitalize on that. Genji, that was purple. But he's going to get out with his life. But, but the red team is still getting some picks on the blue team. Even if uh, they are in the retreat. 
Right, right, absolutely. As I pick on the Anos, that's going to hold the blue team back a little bit. Their their main heals is down. Their main healer utility is not there. Genji dash to the right side there. He might be going for a flank to try to pick off some healers. Yeah, they're looking to get into their back line. A huge charge on the Genji. Yeah, absolutely. That was massive. That was massive. That stopped them right in their tracks. Oh, good defense from the red team. That's kind of what they needed. They, the blue team was basically on a on a tear right there for a minute there. They didn't really stop the payload. They kind of kept moving along there, stopped maybe one or two fights. So the red team's reset here. They've got dragons and more all. Maybe they combo those. Maybe they just use one. But they've got to use those those Hanzo dragons at some point. They've been holding on to them for quite a while. More all Want comes out. Mora? Yep, it's gonna push them back. Push blue team back just a little bit. They're gonna. Back up, regroup, out of line of sight of the mortar alt. Doesn't really get any uh, pick offs or anything like that, but it does hold them back for a minute. So that's really what they're kind of focused on right now, is just trying to waste as much time as possible. Super charger. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Super charger comes out, but she's demolished by the Genji. So it looks like Habutai picked off both the Ana and the Arisa. Mortar alt coming in from Ert. But he got picked off anyway, so it's kind of a waste. Looks like red team's just gonna finish off getting some last minute picks here and they're gonna be uh, another defense. Another defense coming out from the red team. So they're turning it around a little bit. It looked like blue team was gonna kinda push it in with some ease, but they're giving them some trouble on this last point. Yeah, but they are coming up on another nano blade, which is going to open the fight pretty decently for them. But the question Absolutely. is, are... yep, the red team has the utilities to uh, fight against it with uh, their right. own blade. So Yoshi gets a pick off on the little diva, and then the Dragon Blade comes out and gets absolutely shut down by Blue Team. So Monkey coming in with his ult just to kind of delay and stall the point for a little bit. Blue Team still has quite a up. They have four off. They haven't had to use a single one yet this round, this fight. Shatter yeah, gets three shatter. people, three people on the red team. Ryan gets slept, immediately woken back up by the Moira ult. Dragon Blade gets two kills, and it looks like this is going to be a one fight from the Blue Team. But the Moira yeah. ult comes out a little bit late. Kind of wasted from the red team. Diva Bomb comes out. Doesn't find anybody. Yeah, I wonder if the, the, the Ana probably couldn't see the Genji exactly in the position that she was. For the Nano to come in. Right, right. So they didn't really, uh, didn't really perform that combo that well. And they're kind of paying for it right now. Yeah, but it doesn't seem too bad that they are taking the point pretty effectively. Yeah, absolutely. So Diva's coming in to try assault, but she's going to get chewed down pretty quick there. They nano the Diva to keep her up, and the nano Diva can be pretty scary. And they've got a ball now, so it's just stall city for red team and right now. And a huge sleep on the McCree. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Huge sleep. Convert on that kill. Reinhardt goes down. Anna goes down. And it looks like they're going to clean up these last couple kills on the tanks. Where's the last one? She's gone, and that's another defensive hold from the red squad. So down to a minute 24. If they don't convert on this next push here... They're gonna have probably less time than the red team had. Exactly. Uh, they they really have to uh, try to gather some ults to be able to uh, blow the red team off the point to be able to capture it. Absolutely. The red team really turned it around and turned it this into a really decent hold. They the blue team started with five minutes and they brought them down to one minute. So they wasted four whole minutes on this push and that's huge. <clears throat> Supercharger comes out from the blue squad, but they're. Really, it, they use it a little bit too soon because once they get pushed up past that corner, they're all out, out of line of sight and they can't take advantage. The ball comes in and gets a huge slam, puts down a ton of damage, and they get an anti nade on the Arisa, which is going to force them to come back. Little now Diva. Dragon splitting, splitting them up. Yep, splitting them up, and the Little Diva gets two kills. That little blaster pistol is nasty. Hey. But they picked up on the ball. The ball got a little bit greedy, but the Arisa goes down. Ana goes down. And the only one left is the McCree, and he's probably going to get chewed up right now. Yep. Yeah, the, the blue team has to play this very carefully now, because they have to regroup, or they will not be able to contest the point. Absolutely, and the Mora gets picked off really, really late there. Ryan and Genji are just kind of sitting at the choke there, but somebody needs to be able to touch. They have 12 seconds left to get to the point. Somebody needs to touch within 3 seconds, so they can push it into overtime and maybe keep this attack alive. Nanoblade Nano comes out from the red team, team. Red team. yep. Yeah. But then a blade also comes out from the blue team, too. Huge pick on the Ana. Yoshi getting two picks. A dead eye coming out from x -Dak. Diva Bomb gets the Ana. Moral gets the McCree. So we're sitting pretty even right now. Genji's still alive in the Arisa. Both in the Moira from the blue team. On the point, stalling it out. Moira's low. Diva's low. In comes the ball to stall it out some more. 
They eat up that Arisa. Ryan's coming back in. He's nowhere near a shatter. Yeah, I think this is it. And a huge mine kills. And that's gonna be it. Red team comes out with a victory. And a quite a victory it was. That was crazy. I was not expecting that. The way blue team was just running them over for those first few points, I thought this was going to be a pretty quick conversion. But um, red team really pulled it together at the end. They did some really good combos there. Blue team made some mistakes that the red team was able to capitalize on, and uh, they came out with the victory. Yep, that was really well fought on both yep. sides. Absolutely. I think that was actually a really, really fun one to watch. It was very, very close. It could have really went either way. You know, one more kill on either side, and that payload was going straight in. Yeah. So, but that's going to be it for us. I think we um, don't have any more any more NA versus, or Valorant versus Overwatch scrims for the day. That was the last one. Yeah, and quite the scrims it was. It was really, really fun to cast, too. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, a lot of fun to, you kind of forget yourself just uh, in the moment of uh, the excitement of the game. Right, absolutely. So, thanks for all the players who came in and joined us today. This was really awesome. I know not a lot of our teams have Saturday events, so I'm really glad everybody was able to come out. And thanks for everybody who stood and watched, and we really appreciate your support. And I think that's it for us. Yeah, I think uh, this is the end. Absolutely. I had a lot of fun casting, and uh, we'll see everybody later at your events. Thanks, Trix. Thanks, Kane. This was really fun, and uh, we definitely need to do this again sometime for sure. Oh, for sure. definitely. So, everybody have a great night. Yeah. Good night, everybody.